around the turn. Do you want us to take over? Sure. Okay, so you have control. I have the airplane. We're going to have to just alter the turn a bit to centre the thermal again. Um, if you just reduce the bank now to about 20 degrees. And now back to 45. Either direction, whichever side you think is. Ooh. Yeah, let's go one way or the other. Nice, teak, tight turn. That's really good. Bumpy, but it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, yeah. What's it averaging? Five or six knots. Six knots now. Okay. Right, and we've got so much height here, we're going to try and do a straight glide to the Ben Ohel range. And then Lake Kakaki on the right. So what's your strategy here? Okay, well we're going to arrive on the Benoha Ridge, just the other side of this uh, lake. Hopefully above the top, in which case we'll try and find a thermal. If we don't find a thermal straight away, we'll have the option of either carrying on straight along the ridge, or um, or else the wind is strong on the valley floor, so if we can find a piece of ridge that faces northwest, the wind will probably be shooting up there, and, and then we'll be working in ridge level. He was on Benno Hill Peak, coming through 6 5, uh, very rough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is cool. I expect there won't be much left along this stretch of bridge, but the bridge turns around the corner soon and goes to the right. We're getting close to the Mount Cook National Park, um, okay. but this is the Dobson River. safer to be near a steep sided ridge than a shallow sided ridge. Yeah. So when we're crossing a spur like this, you see I'm about to cross a spur that runs left to right? Yep. It's not safe to cross at 90 degrees to a spur because if you hit sink you could plow straight into it. Okay. So, uh, shortly uh, before we get there I'm going to turn left. And this means that if we hit heavy sink I can go left and dive down the valley. Right. Okay. And then only when we're sure we can make it do we then right. turn right like this. Right. <laughs> I'm maintaining a safe glide angle to an airstrip down at Lake Ohel. That's what we're doing at the moment. I'm wondering if it may, may be possible to get into wave up here. Okay. But if we could get into wave here, then that would really uh, that would open up some opportunities where to go next. So the wave coming off that ridge right there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. First, we need to uh, get high into the thermal or something.
Okay, this is good. I think we're just on the edge of the way now. Uh -huh. Holy hell, that's a lot stronger than I expected. That way. Wow, and it smooths out. Five knots of wave. So then you got to go left and right then? Is that the deal? or? Once we're up, yeah. But um, until then, I'm just going to try and stay in the same place and Let's see what slowly happens. gain height. Yeah. That's incredible how it's smoothed out there. Yeah. That, that's one of the signs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the telling sign. Hell. May fall through that layer again and get kicked around a bit. Oh, this is difficult. Silver Fox Shot, full pass, pine tree, climbing northeast. And since it is so smooth and you're so high, you s slow it down to mid sink. Yep. And because uh, we're into wind as well, that means our ground speed is very low. Ah, right, right, right. And the, the, the piece of wave is stationary in relation to the ground. Right. Because it's triggered by a piece of ground. Can you see the sea straight ahead? Yes. Um, yeah, would you mind taking over a minute? Sure, I have. So control. you have control. Just fly another circle the same angle back. Very gentle okay. circle. I'm just turning on the oxygen bottles. Oh, okay. Because I forgot to do that before takeoff. Oh, I got it. Okay, um, now go straight ahead. So uh, come out of the turn straight ahead. Uh, slow right down to 40. Good job. Okay, some more gentle circles left. 20 degrees? Yeah. It'll give you a pulse of oxygen every time you breathe in. Got it. Just breathe slowly and deeply through your nose. Looking for another piece of ridge that will trigger a similar wave straight ahead. In the in the 11 o'clock, slightly left, there's a, a ridge with a bit of a glacier on the side of it.
Mount Sefton, 12,300 north. So at this altitude, do we have final glide for... Uh... Yeah, we do. <laughs> It's not often we're up here and the air's so clear, you know. Um, yeah. Quite often you can't see the west coast because there's cloud down there. Although I'd, I've never seen another aircraft on the summit ridge apart oh. from another glider. They're all they're, they're, they're they all fly lower than that. Ah, I see. Now the wind isn't actually ideal for the face of Mount Cook to work, so we'll have to be careful. Yeah. It might, might not even work. Right. It's a bit too northerly, but um, I reckon the nearest spur may work. Romeo Zulu, Mount Cook Summit, 12,200. Have you ever seen any climbers? No, I haven't actually, no. The hills are so huge. Yeah. Horizontally, I mean, but they're really hard to spot. Here we are at Mount Cook. That's the Grand Plateau down there. Can you see the Red Hut? Yes. Grand Plateau Hut. It's ages since I've been up here. Really? Yeah, a good two months or so at least. Huh. Three, seven. time we'll find out if the ridge is really working. Yep. Yeah, you can feel the wind is this way. Yeah, you can see we're drifting towards the ridge, can't you? Thank <laughs> you. 
Where's the other glider? Underneath us. And we're at 10,000 feet. It's it's slow. Slow. Same position as we are, but yeah, lower. Okay. I haven't seen him. So it's a good call. Fox on X ray, lower down there, 5,500 altogether. So you got a flarm? Yeah. Yeah, well. 